So, when I first saw the trailer to this movie, I knew it wasn't gonna be that good, but nigga, I didn't think it was gonna be this damn foolish either. Now, WB and LeBron James already messed up Space Jam, so I have to ask the question, why the hell did they make this? But that's a dumbass question because I already know the answer is money. With that being said, let's get into the movie. So the movie opens up with Jacob Lattimore's character Kevin making this garbage ass beat for his daughter. <laughs> After that, he goes downstairs and we see his dad who is played by Bill Bellamy and this role could have went to literally any nigga because he's not important. We don't see him again after this scene. He's just one of many cameos who we'll see in this movie. He's basically just here to tell us that him and his wife are about to enjoy his retirement or some bullshit like that and that they about to sell the house. That's when Kevin tells them once he starts his new job. I forgot where well, he's supposed to start a new job some fucking where I don't know because it don't matter. Up somewhere basically saying when he gets the money, he'll have his own place to stay. And I know I'm about to be on this movie's ass for a little minute. So I will give them credit. I laughed one time in this movie. Here it goes. Don't let this house fool you. Mm. Half this shit in here, we got in the rice, right, baby? Ah! You ain't lying. Shortly after this, we cut over to his best friend, Damon, laying in bed. This nigga is a bum, if you can't tell. He's a fake-ass club promoter. Yeah, he's just an all-around bummy nigga. That's just his character. He's staying with his auntie, and he owe her rent money. And once we cut to them, this is when we start getting some of the best comedy I have ever seen in years. And clean up this room, too. It smells like ass and onions in here. So now Damon lays back down and we see he has a picture of Maya hanging up on his ceiling. We know she'll come into play because, but this movie is Cameo City in this bitch. So now we get introduced to the fake ass full force of the movie, who was played by this nigga Dre from Power, Melvin Gregg, AKA Man Boy from Snowfall, and this random nigga, I don't even know who this is. A damn DJ Quick variant? Some, nah, for real, who is this? Tell me. But yeah, we find out that Kevin and Damon for some reason was about to throw a party with these crazy ass, unstable ass niggas. I don't know why, but long story short, they kicking them off the party because Damon's fucking her cousin. He stole from her or some shit. I don't know. But the rest of this scene is just them trying way too hard to be funny. Hmm? And I'ma cut your little nappy head off with a rusty machete. Whoa. Yeah. Then I'ma sew your booty hole up. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. The mom finally gets off his ass and does something and goes to work. Him and Kevin, they be cleaning houses and shit. They still don't know this LeBron's house, though. Now, Damon asks Kevin how his daughter has been. And this is just a random side plot. It just happened out of nowhere. I guess they put it out their ass. But Kevin needs to get money so he can get his daughter into a better school. Then, shortly after, his childhood friend Venus would give him a phone call. His mom actually mentioned Venus earlier in that scene where it was all in the kitchen, but who gives a damn? And we already know childhood friend, it always plays out as the love interest, so yeah. But she's calling to let Kevin and Damon know that they ass is about to be fired. The corporate is in there right now watching a video of you and Damon smoking at the house on Baylor Street. She also lets them know that the company is going to let them finish cleaning this last house, but on Monday they asses is gone. A nigga like me wouldn't have finished cleaning shit. Y'all have had to find some more help, cause what the fuck I look like working for and I'm fired. Nah, that ain't me. So now that these niggas are fired, they decide to go outside and just start thinking. What if we do a house party? So somehow Damon convinces this nigga Kevin that they should just throw the party here in the mansion. And just like a nigga, Damon goes upstairs and starts wandering into shit that's not his, which leads to him finding out that this is LeBron's house. And then these niggas find a LeBron James hologram 
and was able to unlock his iPad using the facial recognition on the damn hologram. I don't know if that can really work, so I'm gonna let that slide. But what I am not gonna let slide is the stupidity when they start planning this party. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering why they're not worried, because the man saw on LeBron James' iPad that he's out of town for two weeks, of course. Later on that day, they started planning for the party while watching the original house party, and it's honestly making me just wanna cut this shit off and watch that instead. Boom, now it's the next day. This is why I say I'm not letting the stupidity slide with how they plan this party. So, remember I told y'all, this motherfucker DeMond unlocked LeBron James' iPad. So, in order to get famous people to pop up at this party, this motherfucker messages damn near every celebrity he sees in LeBron's iPad. And it's just like, I think he said he tell them like some bullshit, like he his manager or something. But still, I am 100% sure that that is not how this would work in real life. I guarantee it. But I also guarantee that this damn email that he sent to Maya wouldn't fucking turn out the way it did in this movie in real life either. So, oh my God. So he finds Maya's phone number in her email and sends her this shit. Not even gonna say nothing, just moving on. Anyway, now they outside smoking and they see a koala in the bush. This random white man comes over and lets them know that it's his koala. Then we get some more of this gut-busting comedy. By the way, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> DC Young Fly arrives as the DJ and his character is fucking pointless too because he does nothing. Basically, they don't want him to smoke or drink because he acts crazy whenever he does. And that's his character. Literally fucking pointless. Now Venus and her cousin arrive. And of course, we always gotta have one black woman with common sense and the other one acting just ratchet as hell in ghetto. That's Venus's cousin. That's all y'all need to know. But once Venus finds out that this is LeBron James' house and they're trying to throw a party, she don't want no parts of it but then Kevin convinces her to stay. Boom, now we get this scene where it's Kevin and Venus sitting at this piano talking about their dreams and whatever the fuck. And Venus says she used to be a dancer, ballet dancer as a kid. And I'm, I'm only bringing that up because it somehow plays a part into this movie. It's stupid as hell, but it plays a part. Now it's later on that night and the party has started. And I ain't gonna lie, these niggas got a good ass security. Whoever this nigga is, get him at my next event. I already told you, if you don't like, you can leave. Fuck you, doorman. Shortly after this, we'll get a random cold cameo that means absolutely nothing. Next. The Black Power Ranger is here as well just to be cameoed. Kid Cudi is here being strange as hell, like always. And now Venus finally arrives back at the house and this shit here, man, this is when they try to recreate the iconic classic dance scene that we all know and love from the first film. And it just don't hit. Damon and Kevin starts dancing. Tanache comes literally out of nowhere and helps Venus start dancing. And it just goes back and forth with them doing these little bland ass dances all the way down to them trying to recreate the kid and play dance. Boy, am I ready to cut this shit off. But I didn't already started the review, so gotta finish it. And apparently, Tanache was so impressed with the way Venus danced, she pulls her to the side and tells her this. You're amazing, you're an amazing dancer. Looking for some backup dancers. Maybe you wanna audition? There is no way she was that impressed with these bullshit dances to tell her to audition as a background You know what? I, maybe, maybe she is that damn good because Tanache came in here and just started dancing. These motherfuckers never planned the choreography, but yet Venus knew every damn step. So you know what? She obviously is that damn good. She can just tell, you know what? Let me, all right, let's move on, y'all. 
So fake ass full force see that nobody came to their party, so now they on their way to Kevin and Demond's party. DC Young Fly gets high and then wanders off and just start doing stupid shit. He really don't need to be here. But this movie don't need to be made, so what am I saying? Kevin sees the party getting out of control, so now he confronts Demond and they get into this little argument and it's supposed to be like a touching moment, but we don't have no connection to these niggas. Who fucking cares? Huh? You ever thought about what I'm supposed to do after you dip on me to take that IT job? We do not care. Had your back since day one, bro. Destiny is my goddaughter and I take that shit very serious. <laughs> Acting. Fake ass full force arrives at the party and they steal LeBron James ring, but before they do that, they catch the man outside and beat his ass, but Y'all, I've been done with this movie since I turned it on, but this shit here, final straw. Up now, fuck boy. <laughs> we gonna beat your fucking ass. See what the fuck I'm talking? Okay, anyway. So the koala from earlier, he got high. Yeah, now he jumps on Demon and starts attacking him. Uh-oh, but wait, guess who's here to save him from it? Fucking Maya. And she just hits it off with Demon as if she just knew this nigga her whole fuck. What? If, okay, for one, if LeBron invited y'all to this party, why the fuck is nobody asking where he is at by now? Man, let me breathe. It's just the fact that Maya would really just randomly i mean like they I, they talking about pools they just they was just having a good ass conversation like they knew each other we know damn well my wouldn't mess with no bomb like the mind look even as venus is trying to get them to make up she's just right here smiling i understand venus but why is you here you don't know these niggas anyway they made up and now they find out lebron's ring is gone but kid cuddy tells them he can get them another ring they ask how he says the Illuminati. Oh my, this, whoa. We cut to the scene and it looks like some eyes wide shut shit. So Damon goes upstairs and finds another championship ring. And remember when they showed Kid and Play in the trailer for only like two seconds? That's how long they in the movie. Kid and Play? Hey, God bless you, man. Yep, that was it. That's all they was there for. So once that happens, Oh my God. Once that happens, the Illuminati tries to start killing Kevin and Demond because they want a blood sacrifice. Long story short, Kid Cudi comes in and saves them. And he dies saving them. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. They'll just clone me again. What the fuck ever. Man, I can't wait for this to be over. We almost there, y'all. So they return the ring. They go back to the house. They tell everybody they need to go home, but it's too late because by the time they try to make niggas leave, LeBron shows up. Of course, fucking course. Uh, in order for them not to get the cops called on them, Demond agrees to play LeBron one on one. But of course, he ends up breaking this nigga ankles. Closing in the cage. Oh, so now it's the end, and Demond is going to jail, and it's supposed to be like this again kind of like emotional happy ending but it's like who gives a damn i kind of resented you for trying to dip on me or whatever but i'm really in that we do not care now everybody can live happily ever after kevin and venus we already knew they was gonna end up together don't know where the hell dc and fly with don't know what happened to him i forgot it doesn't matter um what else fake ass full force got arrested for trying to sell lebron's ring on offer up and maya was hold on before i say that lebron um somehow changed his mind and felt like he was being too harsh on demand them so he got uh demand out early in like a year so i don't know it doesn't matter but guess who's there to pick him up at the end of all of this maya the fuck out of here and that concludes our review of house party 2023 this movie was a chore trying to sit through but i'm glad i got through it i did it for y'all because if you never seen this movie this review will tell you everything you need to know about what kind of movie this is 
man, this was, I'm so glad it's over. I left a lot of shit out of here. And please don't tell me to support this because it's black. I'm not one of those niggas who support shit because it's black. Because no, this is ignorance. I'm not supporting this shit. Matter of fact, the lines was bad. Acting. The cinematography was plain. Like, everything about this movie was bad. And I can't count on how many fingers this nigga Demond said, My Goddaughter Destiny. Hey, how's My Goddaughter Destiny? I had to make one for my goddaughter Destiny. I'm gonna make some money, send my goddaughter to school. I'm done, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. This movie has ran all of my patience out, so I will see y'all again soon this week. I'm out this motherfucker.